Hi, it's Mr. Finger here. Today we are going to look at this headphone stand and see if we can re reinforce it, make it a little stronger. One of the issues you run into with um, especially headphone stands is you've got a lot of, of, of force on this small joint here um, in this headphone stand and we want to add some kind of a bracing. So some, some kind of a, a piece of cut material between here and here, kind of making a triangular shape on the bottom. This is going to help keep it um, from breaking this small joint based on the weight um, you're going to receive from this, the weight coming on your headphone stand. The longer you make this piece, the more, um, a more you're going to be bending down here. So I'm going to show you how to do that today and um, we'll create those pieces. So the best way to do this, you've got your assembly. We need to do this with a sketch. You can't create a sketch in an assembly. Um, and we have a, this student has created a, a, a tab for each of their parts, which is fine, but we need to get them together into a single part studio so we can draw that piece uh, between the two. So we're gonna create a new part studio. I'm gonna call this the supports and, oops. And we are gonna uh, do what's called a derive and bring those parts in that we need to use. So the derive um, looks like this, derive part or drive. Um, and then we will see it on our um, toolbar up here once we start using it. So let's bring in uh, the base and then let's do it again and bring in the stand. And there we go. Now we've got to get that into the right spot so that we can um, create the support. So we'll use what's called a transform. Um, transform is kind of like how you move, uh, similar to how you move items and connect them in the assembly, um, but we're doing it in a part studio. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to, uh, I've got lots of options here, but I'm going to transform by make connectors. First, you need to pick on the part you want to move. So I want to move that one or transform this one. And then I'm gonna pick my mate points. So I'm gonna pick a corner on this surface here, right there. And I'm gonna pick the corresponding corner. Um, it's asking to mate connector, the corresponding corner inside my notch. Uh, let's see if I can get to it here. There we go. And now I just need to flip. Uh, you might have to do um, one of these uh, reorients to uh, the reorient or flip to get it to fit. There you go. Okay, now I'm ready to get ready. I'm ready to orient my drawing so that, um, or my model, so I can draw easily on this right plane. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to transform the entire, um, my two pieces here, my two parts over onto this right plane so I can draw my support on that plane. Remember with laser cutting, we're doing everything flat. So as long as we have a plane, we can we can do that. So we're gonna do transform again, which is sitting right here now. Also search for it. And we're gonna transform by line. We wanna to transform to the origin, which you see right here. Uh, if you don't have that show, make sure you got the eyeball turned on over here. Um, what's nice about Onshape is we when we do transform by line, we can, oh, we gotta pick our entity, which we're gonna transform actually two entities. Don't forget to pick both parts so they both move. Now we want to pick our um, our lines or points. Um, notice we Onshape gives you the midpoint right here, which is what we want to move. So I'm going to grab the midpoint from here and I'm going to put it on the origin. Notice it moved it over, um, vertex of origin and click OK. Now we've got a nice easy way to draw right smack in the center of this. Don't worry if the plane is over at the tip here, it's going to use that whole plane, bring it back here, the whole plane um, for your drawing surface. So next thing we're going to create is the sketch on that plane. And here we go. I have a, a sketch right there. You can see sketch one on the, on the right plane. The next thing I want to do, I want to be able to use these lines in my sketch. Um, and actually, I'm going to make two sketches because there's going to be a point where I want to hide them. I want to make them construction lines because I just want to use them to, um, to, to, to create the outline of my um, 
support bracket. So I'm going to use project convert. Project means take a 3D geometry and kind of shine a flashlight on it and draw a line where it lines up with my sketch plane. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to use use uh, project and I'm going to go and find notice I click if I hover here you see where it's drawing that line. I want one here and I want to draw my bracket all the way through so I want one here. There we go. And then I also want it on here. You can see how it's creating them. One there and one there. So I've got I've got my construction lines. That gives me a nice outline of my bracket so that when I go draw, drawing my, uh, my uh, headphone stand, when I go drawing the bracket, it will I'll see where everything is. So at this point, I would finish that sketch, make sure it's visible, and we're going to do another sketch that's going to be your bracket. The reason is going to be uh, obvious in a minute, but um, create another sketch, choose that sketch plane. Um, the That's going to be the right sketch plane again. And we're going to center and now we can actually hide our headphone stand because we have everything we need to draw from right here. And now we're just going to draw a bracket, uh, however you want it to be. Uh, and we're going to use a normal lines. Um, so I'm going to and make sure when you're drawing, notice it's giving me op, uh, constraints. So right now you see that it's going to create a collinear constraint. So we'll start by doing that. And I'm going to start back here Go this way. Um, perpendicular, you want to try to get that um, so that it, it's going to add all those constraints. The more you can have it do as you're starting out, the better. So uh, now it's going to snap to the thickness of that piece, which we're in millimeters. And now I'm going to go out. I'm going to go down, go back a little bit, go through, and go across. We'll dimension these uh, slots later. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. Um, it will make those parallel. I'll make them a little off right now. Go all the way up. And there we've drawn a very rudimentary bracket. Um, let's add some constraints. I want these to be parallel. So I'm going to click one, two, and I have parallel selected. If you don't have it selected, choose it here. Um, this is too wide. I don't really don't want it that wide. Um, but let's work on the notches first. So um, here's why we wanted to have these lines in a different sketch, because I want to be able to dimension this without having the construction line uh, get in my way. So I'm going to dimension this down here. And let's make that, mm, I'll make it five, I'll make it 10 millimeters. And we'll make this one equal to that. So I'll use an equal constraint. Um, well, it would be nice if I made this symmetrical and it can work both ways. So let's do this equal to that. Okay, so those are both 10. Notice it's turned black because it's now constrained. And um, we can then, let's then dimension this section right here. Since these are parallel, we can dimension this side over here to this side here. And I think, um, let's do 15 here. Okay, uh, notice I did not const I did not constrain these yet, so they're moving around on me. So I've got to constrain uh, my distances here. So a couple things um, I can do here. Um, one, I can just dimension one side, but I really want that to be centered, right? Um, and I want to make sure my tab is this consistent size, so it's equal. So let's just see if we can use some um, symmetry here. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of symmetry in this part, which we could, well, at least on the tabs. Um, let's see if we can make this. Uh, I'm actually going to remove this dimension, and we're going to make them just equal. That's the simplest way. I'll make this equal to that. There we go. We'll do the same down here. can do it either way. Okay, so now notice I can do this, and I've got some more symmetry. Um, I can even uh, I think you can even fit it the size you think you want. Well, I think that looks good right there. Uh, and now we can dimension this, and we can set it to what we want. So let's make that fifteen. All right. Um, now I'm not sure what I need to constrain, so let's hit escape and see what's still moving around. Oh looks like 
uh, our, how high it is. So how high do we want this? This is a good thing we can do with those construction lines. How big do we want this? How much force? And this is where kind of trial and error and experience come in. I'm thinking for a headphone stand like that, that's probably sufficient. Don't want to use too much material. In fact, I think we can probably go down to 12 and a half here. And all right, so we'll dimension this now since I've got it eyeballed in the way I want it. Uh, we'll go from here. Um, this line down to here. Oops. This line down to this line. Okay. How about 35 for good measure? And let's see what else we got. Um, Okay, we've got to do the same thing on the other dimension. So we, I want this to be, uh, I want this piece to be symmetrical. So uh, if I did it like that, it's not going to be symmetrical. So I want to make 35. So what I want to do is just create another dimension between the other tab. Go from here. I went from the inside. Make sure you're doing the same corresponding locations. Uh, I'll go from here. Oops. I guess I have it. Do I have it? Yeah. 35. And look, we've got our fully constrained uh, piece. Um, you can drag those out if you want them to be more visible. Okay, so let's bring our model back and let's see what it looks like with our model. There it is. Zephyr doesn't have, um, it, it's still flat. It's still two-dimensional. So we need to make it three-dimensional. So we can finish our sketch, and there it is. Now we can just extrude that, and we're going to do what's called a um, symmetric extrude. Now I did not put my thickness variable in here. You can be using either global variables or your thickness. Let me just add my thickness variable. Um, and I'm gonna add that, and I'm gonna add my thickness. Three point one one eight, and remember, click check, drag it to the top so it's available to all of your pieces. And now we have thickness. Uh, I have another video on how to do a global variable that will work between all of your part studios. But in this uh, situation, you can just create one there. Okay, so let's go and do that extrude using our thickness variable. Um, there's thickness. Now I'm going to do I'm going to do a symmetric extrude, which means I want to go half the distance in each direction. So I can just use the slash, which is divide and divide by two. Now I should have a, a piece that is symmetric about the center. It's going all the way through my part, which is what I want, and click OK. And notice it got pretty smart and decided to make some, some cuts. So um, one thing you want to do, though, is if we just looked at this other part. Notice it does not have those. So we're going to want to cut out um, these holes. So we'll do that in a separate operation. Uh, it looks right here, but that's just because it's overlapping. Okay, um, so uh, to do those cuts, we can... don't believe we can just extrude straight here. We're going to have to make a sketch. Yeah. So let's create a sketch that's going to make um, these cuts to, to make these notches. Um, at this point, this part right here is basically done. Um, we can we can transform it out of our way, but first we want to add our uh, sketches. So let's create a sketch. We're going to create one here, and we'll work on this one here. And use we're going to use that box. Uh, we can use all the corn all the sides of it. Two, three, four. Okay, now we have that one there. We're just going to do the other one. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to create a new sketch on the bottom. And we're going to use those pieces. This is where hiding your um, construction lines helps. Oh, look at that. And I can do them all now that I have those construction lines. 
Okay, so now I have my sketches, so I can then go and let's move this out of the way so that we can see those, those notches get cut. Um, so we can transform this using the transform tool and um, we can just transform by XYZ. We just move it out of the way. Um, move it out of the way. And now we've got our, um, we can move it back when we're done, uh, but let's cut this out. Remember, it's gonna follow the order. So this part, when we do these cuts, this part isn't there. So it's not gonna get cut. Uh, so let's do this and we're gonna choose our, we can should be able to do both of these at the same time as long as our orientation is correct. Maybe not. Try it, see if we get lucky. Um, we're gonna do a, um, a remove and I don't think it's like doing both. We'll just do one at a time. So uh, here we go. We want to. We can use thickness because we know that's all the further we need to cut. And click OK. Got one notch. We'll do the same thing down here. We've got another notch. We'll use thickness. We'll do remove. We'll do thickness. There we go. Now, if you want to see it all together, you can you can um, you can transform it right back. Um, but we'll leave it at that for now because you have all your parts. They were made correctly, so they will fit. Um, there's a bracket. Now you can, if you want to add designs inside of here and cutouts, you can do that. You can do whatever you want. But there you have a nice notched bracket that's going to hold that headphone stand up.